Hello and welcome to the second video on how to play an open D tuning and more specifically how to play Bob Dylan's classic track Buckets of Rain. Just a quick recap in open D tuning so that we get a, a nice full open D chord we can use a standard A chord shape in the 5th fret and in the 7th fret and we can also lift off the pinky and do the same thing as if we're playing an A suspended chord in the 5th fret and the 7th fret and we can also use an E chord shape in the 3rd fret 3rd and 4th frets that is and slid down to the 1st fret again standard E shape so we're getting a D major 7 in that position and an E minor or an E minor 11 technically speaking in that position in the standard E shape E chord position so we can get a nice rundown from the 7th fret. Which can be used in Book is a Rain, actually. More of that later. Okay, so that's where we're at at the moment. A shape, 7th, 5th, E shape, 3rd and 1st. And open D. Okay. Right, oh, let's uh, now take a look at the specific chords that are used in Bookies of Rain. They're mainly two fingered chords used in D, G, and A chords, or at least variations on them. Uh, with the capo on the second fret, they are, of course, actually E, A, and B. But I'll continue to refer to them as if we're playing in the key of D, playing in open D. Well, the first one is this one, which is actually a, uh, an A7 or A7 suspended fourth chord. First finger, first fret, third string. Third finger, second fret, first string. So that's A7, sus4. Now you can, if you want, include a bass note by fretting at the sixth string. Now, of course, on the recording, Bob has a bass guitarist to play his bass notes for him. Uh, but it's useful to be able to incorporate some bass notes in this song as well. Unless you've got a bass guitarist to hand who can help you out. So that's a, the first chord, A7 sus4. The second chord is a D chord, and all we need to do is to slide it up that same formation, slide it up two frets. playing the D chord. Okay. The third chord is a G or a G actually technically it's a G add 9 and all we need to do is to from that first chord move the third finger onto the second string. And again, we can get a bass note if we put the second finger in the second fret on the fifth string. Now, Bob Dylan never plays the fifth string in the recording as he alternates between the sixth and fourth only. But 
there's nothing to stop you playing that bass note when you play that chord. Okay, so A7 or A7 sus4, D, G add 9. The next chord, the fourth chord, is a, a D sus4, D suspended fourth, and it's simply a one fingered chord, first finger, first fret, third string. Those are the chords. Um, the next one, fifth chord, is a two fingered chord played at the fifth fret to give us a G. What would be a G if we were playing in D, of course? And then that chord slid up to the seventh fret to give us the A chord if we were playing in D. So it's the second finger, third string, fifth fret, third finger, first string, fifth fret. Slid up from the fifth to the seventh and back again. So we need to be able to slide between these chords comfortably. Both ways. So I need to practice where these chords are and be able to land on them without looking more or less and slide between the two. The final two chords in the song are again two fingered chords played at the 10th and 12th frets. Same fingers but just moved up to the 10th fret and the 12th fret. So those are the chords that are used in, in the song. I hope it's been useful to you. In the next video I'll uh, take a look at the picking pattern that's used in this song. But meantime, need to practice those chords. Just go through them again. A7 sus4, D, G add 9, G, A, and then what is probably an A minor or an A minor 7, slid up to an octave D, what I call a top octave D. Okay, cheers for now.